Please bow with me for a prayer. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us to hear them and the message from Pastor Paul. Hear, learn, and inwardly digest them that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're in Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Do not be anxious about anything, it says. But in everything, in prayer and supplication, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Don't be anxious about anything. That's a big ask, ain't it? <laughs> you know, I'm kind of wired to that when things don't go the way I want or I can't do anything about something, I find myself getting a little anxious. And I don't think I'm alone in that. And if we look a little even beyond ourselves, as we were praying about, there are things in the world, there are things in our nation, in our community, and in our lives that just ain't right. They are things that we should be concerned about, things that should have our attention rather than hiding under rocks because our lives, the lives of people that we love and the world around us do have a lot of very real things that are very real trouble. And we have lots of requests to be made known to God and I don't know about you, but I start praying for one, and another one comes to mind, and another one, and another one. And if I pause, it's because I stop thinking. Because the moment I start thinking, there is a lot that we have to bring before the Lord. And so many of them are beyond our power and our abilities. Things that we're not capable of addressing, let alone even comprehending sometimes. But you know what? You take Nancy and I, and we go camping out in the wilderness, or let's say after hurricanes, may one not hit us this year, or something at the house breaks, the car breaks. Nancy is always really impressed with my MacGyver skills. <laughs> I can do a lot. You know, and sometimes a coat hanger, it's a duct tape, is about all it takes but they only go so far, don't they? There are things that are bigger than us. The world is in great need. And you know what? We only get so many miles on the odometer of our lives. Our physical bodies have an expiration date. And so do those of those we love. Hearts break. Great needs arise. We face problems and forces that are bigger than us. But the great news, as we've been singing about, this is our Father's world, and we belong to Him. He loves us. He will not abandon us. He's with us in the dark valleys of the shadow of death. He prepares feasts for us in the presence of our enemies, and He promises never to leave us or forsake us. But let's face it, sometimes when we run into these things that keep pounding on us, keep wearing at us, or just catch us by surprise, man, it feels lonely. We feel powerless. That there's no one and nothing. And things are broken, things are wrong, things hurt. Not worrying about anything, however, 
doesn't mean that we have to solve it on our own. And it certainly doesn't mean that we should bury our heads in the sand and pretend that these aren't real problems. That if we just put on a happy face and sing a simple song, they go away. That's not true. There are dark valleys, and there are enemies that we face. Instead, it says, pray to God and to submit ourselves to God. To let our requests be made known, and with supplication, with offering of ourselves, even of our wills and our ideas of what the solution is, to offer them to God. But the amazing thing, and something that often gets overlooked, are these words, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. Because one of the things that happens is fear, need, pain, injustice, powerlessness, they claw and they scream for our attention, don't they? We become fixated on them, and they keep drawing us in closer and closer like a whirlpool until they drown us. We even become addicted to them. We get caught up in habits in our lives where we cling sometimes to these things that are painful, these areas of our lives where we, we want to fix. We want to be in control. And when that happens, it blinds us to God's presence, God's love, God's provision, because we're overwhelmed, because we can't do it ourselves. And that's why God says, let your requests be made known. Tell me about them, God says. And not only tell me about them, offer yourself to me, rather than trying to do it all yourself. Because our needs are real. You know, sometimes we whine about little things, but there's enough big things that we need to bring before God that are real. But in that, we're also called be thankful. Because thankfulness is an amazing gift, and thankfulness is not only the result of something happened for which we could be thankful, but thankfulness, sounds circular here, but the moment we start to be purposefully thankful, we become aware of even more things to be thankful. And it begins to change our heart and our lives. Because for some reason, when we're caught in the midst of a difficult time, sometimes just saying, God, thank you for that sunset, feels difficult because it sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes in myself, to be thankful for something when I'm just being crushed kind of feels like a denial of all the pain and all the pressure. But it's not because they are both true. Being thankful is widening the lens of what we seek, not ignoring the problems, and not fixating on them. Because we start to think, how can I be thankful when I have so little? How can I be thankful when I'm sick, I'm broke, or I'm badly treated? How can I be thankful when I don't have what all my friends have? But I believe that thankfulness is way underappreciated, but also, because of that, it's under-experienced. Now, if you've been around me very long, you've heard me preach about thankfulness before, haven't you? How many have heard me preach about thankfulness? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Jesus keeps talking about it. The Apostle Paul keeps talking about it. So maybe I need to keep talking about it because I keep learning more myself as I consider it. One of the things I find... <laughs> I've, I've looked up, and I've told you this many times, Duke University did a study, and they found that if you write down three things for which you are thankful before you go to bed, and you do that for three weeks, 
the positive results of having done that simple thing will last for months. <laughs> Being th purposely thankful before you go to sleep will have such an effect on your heart and on your life that they can measure that effect, that change, for months, even if you stop it. <laughs> but thankfulness is an act of faith. If we want to say we have faith in Jesus, we need to be able to have faith to say, you know what, there are things for which we can be thankful in the midst of a difficult time. Because thankfulness is at the heart of the gospel. Because thankfulness, gratitude, is our response to what God has done in Jesus Christ. Whether we call it letting Jesus into our heart, making him Lord of our lives, becoming his disciple, the impetus for all of that is gratitude. When we find ourselves in times of pain, loss, and difficulty, it takes faith to be able to look beyond ourselves, our circumstances, beyond the things that are, make us cower, beyond our own powerlessness, and even beyond our own expectations to be thankful. Thankfulness, like forgiveness, isn't cheap. Like forgiveness, forgiveness, we have to give up that grudge to forgive someone. To be thankful costs us a fixation on what we want in order to celebrate what we already have. Thankfulness costs us resentment for things in the past in order to live in the present. And this can be hard. This is hard. Because thankfulness is a radical reorganizing of our priorities. To be thankful is to live in the present rather than be bound to the past. We're trying to live in the future. When we're thankful, we can see opportunities rather than impossibilities. When we're thankful, our troubles and difficulties don't go away, but they lose power that was theirs, never theirs to begin. <laughs> when we're thankful, our troubles never go away, but they lose the power over us they should never have had. When we're thankful, we're more likely to see what we can do than what we can't do. When we're thankful, we begin to appreciate what we have rather than just mourning what we're missing. When we're thankful, we even begin to think about what we can give rather than what we need. <laughs> and you know what? That's what Jesus did for us. Think about it. We're going to celebrate communion today. Jesus sat at that table with his disciples, knowing the cross was knocking at the door, knowing that one was to betray him. What did Jesus do? He took that bread, and the first thing he did was give thanks. And what, what was he going to say about that bread? This bread is tasty. My mom made it. No. This is my body which is broken for you. He took the bread and he gave thanks. If that doesn't blow your mind, you're not thinking about it. <laughs> he took the bread and gave thanks. In fact, one of the words Christians use for communion, the Lord's Supper, actually means thanksgiving. That his broken blood, his shed, his broken body, his shed blood means thanksgiving. The word Eucharist. It's a Greek word that means thanksgiving. And Christians around the world call our coming to this table a Eucharist, a thanksgiving, a thanksgiving in the midst of the one who is without sin taken upon himself 
the sins of the world. <laughs> For God so loved the world that what? He gave his only son. We give thanks for that. But Jesus, not for our sake, but because of our need, offered himself for that. And he didn't give thanks for it in a denial of the pain, but knowing the pain that was about to be inflicted upon him, giving thanks even in the light of his broken body and his poured out blood. I'd like to take just a couple seconds here for, to give you an opportunity to just name a couple things for what you're grateful. And you know what? It could be as simple as, I thank God it's not as hot today <laughs> as it's been. What are some things you're grateful for? Amen. Just popcorn them out. Throw them out. It's a good thing. And I want to encourage us that in our times of prayer that we fill in and are purposeful about things for which we can be grateful. Things for which we can be thankful because let our prayers and our supplications be made known to God with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. It doesn't mean a denial of our requests, but it's an accompaniment to that and for whom God is. And let us all take time today. You know, this isn't something to put off to tomorrow but as part of our lives, to readily be grateful. You know, I was brought up with spiritual disciplines of, you know, worship, of studying scripture, of um, fellowship, of serving God, of telling others about Jesus. And all those ways fed me and fed my faith. But as we make disciples, what Jesus describes as teaching them to obey all that I commanded, he teaches us to be grateful, to be thankful. And that just as we spend time in prayer, we spend time in scripture, we spend time in worship, we need to be intentional, I believe, about investing time, effort, in being grateful to God and towards one another. And as we do so, I know that in my life I've discovered God's presence and power, when I felt totally powerless, as I've been grateful for things I'm aware of, God has shown me opportunities when I thought there were dead ends. When I'm grateful, I discover God's love when I thought and felt alone. And when I'm grateful, I realize that it's not about me getting my way. <laughs> but that God will get his way with me and through me. <laughs> amen. And that's it. Are we willing to say amen to that in our hearts, in our lives, and to live it? Amen.